Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. You look like a lemonade surprise today. It's so summer fun in your wardrobe. Thank you. This is the <laughs> shirt that I bought in three colors and it's the third of three and I have spaced it out to not do it all at once. It's a series. Okay, great. <laughs> you know, when you want to go shopping in Corona and you can't pick a color and they all look good. Okay, great. And you're at it. So you're like, let's just get them all. Let's get them all. Yeah. <laughs> Collect them all. That's you know, nice. when a shirt fits in a color, I support getting multiple. I think that's great. I think that's well, great. Well, this is the skating list. It's like a Lauren Sheehan dress. We could put it on Tara Lipinski. We could put it on Sydney Vogel. We could put it on Nicole Bobek and Tanya Kwiatkowski and Shelby Lyons and um, Andrea Gardner. Wow, and these are some throwback names. Gosh. Yes. Fish called Wanda. Okay. All <laughs> right. You're going to discuss all things figure skating. If you are new, please subscribe below and smash that like button to give us some validation. You know, think about it as a support for Brian and Raphael in these difficult times that they're oh, in. Gosh. We're going to get into it. Call that ISU awards show like down to the letter. It was more, even more strategic than I imagined. And yeah. it seems. Yeah. I, including a Terry not being there. There's an old vintage Will and Grace episode where Jack thinks he's nominated for a cabaret award and he chooses to accept it via video because he thinks that's what all the famous people and the most important people do. So then to see that just a Terry thumbnail, well, Roth and Brian are forced then on camera to applaud her win. And someone I should I should have looked up who on Twitter had the best comment when they were like, accepting the award on a Terry's behalf is Brian Boitano. <laughs> so I also love that all the fans were like, well, she's busy coaching, as though the other two don't have the same profession and aren't trying exactly. to Exactly. Yeah. You make time for the things that are important to you. Exactly. Uh, and that was it. It's like when you try to date someone, and in the beginning when everyone's playing hard to get, and they're like, I'm so busy. And you're like, oh, because I'm twiddling my thumbs. Yes. Yeah. If someone yeah. ever tells you I'm so busy, you just know that like, they're not the right person. They're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Coming in loud and clear. Yeah. There's a way to say it. You could be like, oh, yeah, let's try to make time. But, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyway, Terry didn't want to make time for the ISU, even though they were giving her coach of the year, which we is inherently problematic. And Natalie Vlandis wrote about how two of the three nominees she felt were problematic, in her opinion, um, as a clinical psychologist. And I thought that that was her opinion. Um, I did think it was very amusing to watch them sit there and their body language because these are not actors. I mean, right. Ryan was a skater on the ice, but he's had to deal with second place a lot. And he's also won a lot as a coach and as a skater himself, but he's definitely <laughs> um, one that wears his emotions on his face, as you can tell. And it was so funny, even talking to a few Canadians before the awards came out, they're like, you said a Terry was gonna win, but of course Brian is gonna win. He's the best coach. And you're like, that's not how this works. That's so the only reason I wondered if Brian could have won, although I was inclined to agree with you, it seemed like a Terry was just like the no brainer choice here that they were gonna have her win, was I didn't know how much fan involvement and like the Hanyu fans were going to somehow insist that it was also, but again, when you're the governing body, you got to be careful. It can't be so, <laughs> so clear. So actually, Ateria in some way was still balancing out. If everything became a Hanyu or Sir. Oh, it was you know, very balanced if you looked at it. There was Hanyu and Shaylin one. So for right. that kind of camp. Then there was, so Marie Franz didn't win choreographer of the year, but she did get most entertaining program and then they got best costume. And Terry's mm -hmm. girls were nominated, all three of them in different categories. And, and Costa Naya did win and Terry won for best coach. Costa Naya got best newcomer. And then, well, Kurt. extra salt on Brian's room. Kurt got lifetime achievement award, although deserved uh, for his skating. Although I could lifetime, <sighs> No, Kurt is a phenomenal skater. He's had a phenomenal career and deserves an award. Okay. When you say lifetime achievement award, I'm thinking of someone who's 80, right? Like I'm thinking like Dick Button is 91 years old. Someone and who contributed as much when they were competing and perhaps as they have post competing. Dick, yeah. has, I mean, Kurt has decades more to contribute. Right. 
that's why the, the award was just like a joke to me. Oh, I got a message from Ari Zakarian and it just said, interesting. Don't you love that? Interesting. <laughs> you're like, I was like, yes, you're a very interesting guy. I yeah. think your award show is very interesting. Yeah. Listen, you're a survivor, Ari. I don't just like Ari. I just thought it was hysterical. Yeah, I mean, Character. the whole thing. The whole thing, just a little silly. Listen, we see you. Now that you see us. So. <laughs> <laughs> we see each other. Wasn't that, remember that? We see each other, yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. I like Ari, so hysterical. I, you have to have a sense of humor about the ISU and this bullshit awards show where they were trying. And quite frankly, it gave a lot of skating fans to come together and chat about. Felt and, like old times about, in a way, chat yeah. About. I didn't read the bios because frankly, I didn't care about this award show. <laughs> the Fanyu were already thinking that Nathan wasn't going to get the award. Nathan was going to get the award, even though it was always going to go to Hanyu. It wasn't Skater of the Year. It was deliberately called Most Valuable Skater right. so that they could give him an award. Right. Because it's a, if it had been based competitively on the season, it had to go the other way. But Yes. The yeah. whole name of the award was so they could give something to Hanyu for his contributions to the sport right. and his performances and to get his fans engaged and to keep the audience. Come on, this was the biggest like planned out hug to international skating of all time. I mean. Fair enough. Like they achieved what they set out to do then. I mean, yes. but it's really interesting. They even this. gave like a random nominee to Korea to keep them in the mix. It was right. all right. so planned. That's Inclusive. Right. They're gonna yeah. give like, an award to you not. Maybe in the second edition, they will do that to get her fans. Right, hundred percent. That is the that is how this award is going. Uh, yeah, they had to give something to Canada. They're like, oh, Kurt Browning. It was all so strategic. And Shaylin, they got they got a twofer on this one. Shaylin, yeah. who was dressed like she was in a Catholic school dress. It looked like a dress that my sister had on um, <laughs> Picture Day in nineteen ninety two. Um, I'll have to try to find it. it. And she and they were the speeches were so Canadian. She was so honored. She loves to get to know the skaters. I do think she is a nice person, but she was putting on her Tessa Virtue, Tanif Belbin, Miss America. 100%, 100%. Just circling back for one moment to the Hanyu biography, because they were, they were up in arms that they felt he, they didn't give him enough credit in the bio. As if, bullets. as if someone voting on this didn't know exactly who all of the players were in they this have game. a real sense of perceived slights. And that's, you know, we've talked about certain like ice dancers in the United States feeling like they're always the underdog and the system is rigged against them. And Hanyu has achieved great success. I'm unfamiliar with like the great crime against Hanyu. So that's why I tweeted, I don't know if you saw my tweet, did he win? Oh, because I, I was not watching. I said, did he win? Because... so long. Um, I said... <laughs> Did he win so I don't have to stay off the internet for a century? And I said, he's literally paying all of their paychecks. Basically saying, I'm agreeing with you. Give him the award. And a couple Hanyu fans got upset. And they were like, well, you make money off of skating and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, why are they so threatened? No one's like- I'm saying I, he I, deserved it. And they were like, and you judge him on Patreon. And I was like, we've actually never judged him on Patreon. Yeah. But that's a great idea. So Jonathan, we should judge. <laughs> Some events with Hanyu and Nathan coming up. I'm thinking we'll do 2019 Worlds, um, and we could do maybe the Olympics for 2018. And That's been fun to do the with the skating scores system thing. Yes, now, now it's so it much easier to do we, we, the, I, the IJS judging. 100. And I'm thinking we'll do Tessa and um, Tessa and Scott. Mm -hmm. We can do against Marilyn Charlie and do them against the French. We have a lot of fun things. Oh my God! If we do 2014, we could also do Natalie Pachelot versus Yannicka Katsalapa. This is a great event. Yeah. I think you are a genius, okay? Let's... Oh, thank you. I don't get enough of that. <laughs> okay, let's, so. So actually... it reminds me, it reminds me sometimes, like also, again, back to this Fanyu, Fanyu thing, however you would pronounce it. Fanyu, I think. Sometimes like I'll have colleagues when we're doing an opera, immediately when the program comes out, like towards the performance, they flip to their bio and then they're irate. It didn't even include X, Y, Z credit. And I'm, <laughs> you just think like, nobody cares. Like, come on. Do you know what I mean? This is so, such a non-factor. And I'm just so, it's, they're so afraid, some of these Hanyu fans. It's as if they actually don't trust in Hanyu's talent enough. 
because his talent is enough, you guys. Like, everyone's on board. Everyone thinks Hanyu is great. There's no problem. You don't have to feel so threatened if anyone else succeeds. But if we're being honest, he's towards the end of his career. This is their identity, and it's built in such a fever pitch. And yes, it's about him, but it also becomes about the fandom, and it becomes about the hysteria, and it becomes about building it. And it becomes because Hanyu fandom. doesn't care. Like we, when I mean, we asked, cares, but of course he does. But yeah. like when we uh, we reached out, um, or I said on one of our videos, can people who speak Japanese mm -hmm. tell me kind of the vibe they get in his interviews? You know, mm -hmm. speaking the actual language, not reading a translation. And they were like, he's eloquent, he's down to earth, he's, you know, all this sort of stuff, kind of how I happen to know Nathan is, because I can recognize that in his interviews. And so these are two normal people that don't really seem to have the problems everyone else has. I mean, they don't like to lose when you're at that level. No one does yeah. when you're that yeah. of an athlete. At the same time, I don't think that he was defacing um, Olympic property writing at the ISU the way. Um, right. <laughs> so I mean, it just it's it's become it's become a thing. Like yeah, it's the way that like the Virgil and Moyer fandom has become a thing. This has become and it builds on itself, and it starts to have very little to do with the person. And in, right. in the case of Virgil and Moyer, they start resenting like Scott right. or something like right. that. So it's just uh, it's bizarre. It's like the Beehive and Swifties, whatever Taylor Swift calls her fans, whatever. Who? Oh yeah, no. <laughs> I know, really your area. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm gone. It okay. comes about more than it, than about the actual person. It takes on a life of its own. So yeah. it, psychologically, it becomes more about the fan themselves and their own identity. So anyway, um, lots to discuss there, but when Terry didn't show and Ryan's, like Roth's, he does not. I mean, he was like, mm -hmm, of course. And then, and have you ever seen a more, now I, maybe I should be careful because we're not on Patreon, a more heterosexual man in your life, just the camera angle, <laughs> the body language, like the buttons were screaming a little as he's like, is that response like, yeah, hmm, all right, whatever. And Brian almost had to guffaw it off. You know what I mean? Because I think there was that realization for them both in this moment. I didn't realize they would have everyone live, like watching so the they, result. They both look tortured to be there. Yeah, very uncomfortable. They knew what was coming. They yeah, knew. yeah. They should have contacted whomever like right beforehand and had them film a thank you thing and just run it like a movie. Just ridiculous. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also, we haven't seen Coaster Naya in a while. Was that a makeup? I was like, are we getting the Atari filler? What is happening? I just thought it was like, you know, because the ISU use these soft filters on everyone. So they didn't look how we usually see them. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Terry looked like she filmed her thing on Snapchat or something. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Okay. Her face wasn't moving, but she was telling us we're going to get through the hard times. I believe it. Okay. Yeah. I felt better. <laughs> Seemed really comforting. I was Comfort was, is mainly I was, what I feel from her. I was glad to see her. You know, I've missed yeah. her. I've missed Raphael's angered expression in the kiss of cry, <laughs> man spreading, sitting there like this. And Brian Brian's kind of like, is this <laughs> real life? Yeah, like. <laughs> Brian looking like he's in a kiss and cry with Jason Brown. I mean, it was all great. You know, it was just, could just Lane have been sitting on the couch next to him? That would have been also really fun, <laughs> you know. Maxwell? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, the right skating is going. Too okay. soon, Jonathan. Too yeah, okay, okay. Anyway, all right, so. Nini is a name that used to be just reserved for reality television. That's right, and that's a reference I do know. Yes. Yeah. But Nini, Ah Xiong Yi, Jonathan, that article in Esquire magazine. Okay, yeah, I have to say, so when your article, uh, you know, your my video, article, my video, your yeah. video about the article um, really sent me down a rabbit hole then this morning. I went and started looking up her rabbit clips. Hole, you know you need it, okay. I didn't, and so, Okay, let's just get a little bit of background here. This is why skating needs the fluff pieces that we yeah. kind of cringe over, but it's necessary. Well, this was dark. I well, mean, this girl's a star now. How are we ever going to not watch her? Right. Uh, and the, or the mom. <laughs> you want to see the mom next, sitting next to Arthur Liu and Ting's dad and like pan to them. 
Yeah. I would like to judge any performance, like Paula, Randy, and Simon. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> so how did this article come across you? Like, um, it came out. I believe it was posted by Reddit in a thread, and approximately 400 people sent me messages. Okay, the they week. were on it. Okay, okay. But I was too tired from skating this week to care. Not that I didn't care, but I couldn't, I didn't have the best level to do the video, to invest. Yeah. I knew it was a deep dive. I knew it was gonna take some energy. And I was nervous at the fact that they called her a tiger mother at first. And then I just decided to just go with it because the author called it themselves. And, that was and you quantified it as such in the video. You were yeah. explaining that you're just talking about an article. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. Um, so I watched her performance then from 2019 Chinese Nationals, where she was second to Hong Kong's Christy yeah. Young. Um, I kind of really enjoy her skating. Yeah. I think there's a lot to like here. Um, how old is she? She's 13. Okay, so she's and she's still competing as a junior. I, I was just we didn't see her on the she Grand Prix. Junior international, they let her compete as a senior in China the same way that we let Elizabeth right. compete as a senior. Right, right, right. But she wasn't on the Junior Grand Prix previously. Well, I think she was a year too young because okay, you know, the okay. Same way some of Terry has those girls that are too young, and then they right, right, right. Okay, how we knew about Usashova and right. yeah. So anyway, yes, it was. Very exciting. Um, 300 triple triples in a day. And I was wondering, is this hyperbole or is this real life? Based on how the mother was speaking, who knows? The important thing is that she got a fibula injury from it. Tessa Hong got injured because Tom Z had her doing triple letters back and forth. Or at least that's what I was told that by the mother. Um, that they had them doing triple letters back and forth and back and forth until... The body. And in what world would that improve that skill? That, do you know, I understand repetition. I understand tacking, you know, triple toes at the end of everything just to get used to that kind of idea or something like that. But just, just this excessive repetition, I just don't understand in any world how that improves and the quality of anything. Longer, that it's going to improve muscle memory. But you know, there's a fine line in all of athletic training between pushing and then between hurting and damaging. And then at the end of the day, you're off the ice for months because right. you are injured in that way. So it's, there's always a, a balance there. So, mm. yes. Heavy. Victor always talks about it like he's like, you know, your athletic performance when you're doing repetitions of a number that you have to build them up and that it's like a, a curve. And at a certain point, it starts to dip because your body starts. To... That's exactly right. And when you were talking about your acts of repetitions with him, we're going to do this many of quality. Now go drink your water. When it, yeah. you know what I mean? Like take that mental space from it for a second before we come back to it. To me, that's someone who actually did it. Mm -hmm. um, and this happens again, just in singing sometimes, pianists will be our instructors in some sort of way. And they send all the wrong information because they want us to practice in a way that's not conducive to singing, but that's more conducive to piano. And so this mother thinking that doing 300 triple triples is in somehow strengthening the two she's gonna do in her program, it, it just reeks of someone who never actually did the thing. So I still, the 300 is, Wow, I, I mean, I don't know. That seems like an exaggeration to me, but I I imagine she did a ton. And yeah, they got and a ton and any anything in excess is wrong. I mean, yeah. I would think. And it, it is a triple triple, and they were saying that she is afraid of the triple axel a bit. Um, so yeah, there is just a ton um, going on there. I mean, it's yeah, dark. I, it's dark, um, and she has wanted to train with the Terry, and then another skater wanted to train with the Terry. I was interested. Well, this is a skater when I watched the program, like when we kind of knew Elizabeth Trusenbaeva would have thrived under a Terry. She kind of does have some real skating skills here. This yeah. is the kind of girl that may find a Terry a break. I was actually wondering that if she gets to a Terry's program and they're gonna they're gonna tell her to calm down a little bit, to go yeah, easier. I, I was thinking. And Terry could be in a really interesting situation. She has a ton of success. 
there are going to be a lot of federations, China being one of them, who are willing to send the skaters and pay the exorbitant amount of money that a Terry could make. At the same point, she's so tied into Russian sports, which has become such a part of, she's become such an important figure in Russia. And this has happened with some of the rhythmic coaches where they will take, you know, usually they take on gymnasts who are not of the same caliber of those they are training, but they have some, I mean, turns and Baeva got a bronze one year. Although Turs and Baeva has such, such a connection yes. to Moscow and that whole scene. But even remember when Nikolai Morozov was coaching skaters, they, for a while, they put the kibosh on that before the Sochi Olympics. You do wonder at some point, will a Terry either take it, you know, go abroad to cash in or will she make more money being in Russia and- Maintaining her all Russia brand. So we here's- get her a good raise, okay? The fact that these people want to come to her and they are willing to pay. This mother would have paid anything. To yeah. I, and in wondering about that Russian nationalism, because we know it is painfully clear that they do not like when Russian athletes train with non-Russian coaches because they, there's a nationalism going on. I think we understood from some people inside that they view it as, of course, they want to come work with the Russian coaches because we're the best, so that they don't mind doing that because it's another solidifying statement that the Russian coaches are also the best coaches in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, when Mishin was with Kostner most recently, it was kind of a non-relevant situation. That was kind of the only example I can think of. You know, there um, was a situation. I don't know if I should say this, but allegedly, Brady Tunnell was training with Mishin. Mm -hmm was doing too well on her triple axel and they had her stop working on it. These are the kinds of situations that arise when these skaters do go to other countries. Right. You have to ultimately think, where is the loyalty? What right. are they gonna do? What, these, these coaches know how to play the game. So, Which is why kind of Shoma having tried a tier, maybe they were more amenable to it because Look, he wasn't a threat to anyone skaters, in their they have rank. No men that are right. in any danger of being being out near Shoma. Yeah. So, that's still one of the great stories. Mysteries. Like, just the last eighteen months of his career, fascinating. When you yeah, get that will be one of the. You know, obviously, we're intrigued to see what every skater how they come out the other side of this pandemic and all this sort of stuff. But Shoma could be a very intriguing one because there were so many questions and things starting to happen going in that mm -hmm. I'll be very intrigued to watch him almost the closest uh, as we come back to see what this time has done or not done for him. Yeah, it's interesting um, how many of these borders open up and when these skaters can go back. Rika hasn't been able to go to Canada yet. Will she be able to go to Canada? There was a Russian article doubting that she will be able to go there. You know, she isn't able to go there yet. We, we don't know. And we don't know how long this virus is going to last. I mean, we live in a country where the president only first publicly wore a mask in a non-photo op yesterday. Meanwhile, <laughs> there are millions of cases. We have a quarter of the cases in the world. It, it's not going anywhere. Um, and I think about the figure skating competitions. I was starting to look and really think more critically about virtual competitions. I do think it does sound like the Peggy Fleming trophy is going to be virtual. I, that's going to be a competition. The Hershey competition is still listed as happening, but who knows what will happen there. But I do think that the ISU and the USFS, it's kind of really time that they speak about virtual competitions and what that could mean and those kind of options because you have judges yes the judges won't be able to evaluate speed in the same way but they do know these skaters they're expert judges you can identify skating skills on video right. as much as you know there is the performance in person that can be slightly different but when you see everyone on the same camera angles and they're not without zoom excessive zooming in listen it's better than well that. and that's and we just got i think we more talked about this on patreon because when we watched was it um 2018, where at the end of like every program, they were doing aerial shots of the spins. Yeah. 
to me, that's the biggest hurdle they actually have to address is who's in charge of camera angles because we're not looking for a movie. We're, we're looking just to assess what's happening, not to enhance it in any way. Yeah. So I think that would be the biggest um, hurdle they kind of have to face is who's doing what angles, uh, you know, I don't know. It, that's the tricky part. So I was been talking to different skaters about what they're hearing from their federations. There's some talk that maybe the Challenger series will take place, but it will only be the skaters for that country, which is great unless there's a spike in the fall, at, at which case that could be a, a quite of a dangerous thing in certain countries. So if, could you imagine? Um, I do think that we could get to a situation where maybe skaters would have to be in a bubble together and do virtual competitions and the judges could evaluate. I think that that would be a better option than not having any skating whatsoever. I think that people would be much more favorable to have a competition with video. Yes, there are gonna be imperfections. There are imperfections in live competition too. And- Would you rather have that over nothing? And I think the answer is you'd rather have something yeah. And to know that going into the Olympic year, momentum is shot. You know what I mean? Sometimes I think that we always look to the season before as a real preview. And I think, you know, the results will be, all be taken with a grain of salt, but it will pe keep people competing and in the eyes and, and this sort of thing. I don't know. I, so I it think it could be an opportunity done. for skating because think about all of the contact sports. So many of them are not going to happen. College football is changing by the day. The NBA yeah. is changing by the day what is supposed to happen there, where they were gonna go in conference and now because of the spikes in the South, the SEC is starting to reconsider. Should those be eventually canceled? There's gonna be a lack of sports, which also is terrible for that industry because it'll lead to layoffs there. Um, but imagine it would be a chance for skating to people to watch it. ESPN will need to fill the hours somehow. NBC Sports will need to fill the hours and it could be- I'm like, just two old events. <laughs> two old, two old events. events and talk about them, yeah. Two old events, but if you do a virtual event, people will be more curious into- Of course. Yeah, when there's nothing on. <laughs> like, and there was some article recently where the NBA players that are, where are they? Like in Orlando or in, in Orlando, Disney somewhere. Has yeah. crazy spikes going on. And they're like, oh, it doesn't feel the same. And it's like, yeah, of course it doesn't feel, what are you crazy? No one said it was gonna feel the same, but even I wonder if different arenas in different continents are holding, let's say a world championships, mm -hmm. just as an example, that there's a US rink where all the US skaters are gonna do it. And there's some ISU person officiate. I just fear that everyone's going to find so many injustices or advantages as well. Who's on what ice find and- injustices who, you know. over the bios. It, bingo, bingo. So I think it's just gonna happen regardless. And I think anything we could do to see skating would be important for everyone. Also to keep people going. It gives that Also effect. financially, I mean, those coaches, the choreographers, you know, it keeps everything kind of happening. Yeah. Um... I don't know that that many rinks in California are shutting down again, but it, it is getting dicey to where things are. And, and most of the rinks are open in limited capacities and then you are still fighting with hockey and there's still limited numbers of training. So there's a lot of different kind of issues going on. You know, finding ice is certainly not um, simple everywhere right. right now. And there are still different uh, roles everywhere. So, yeah. And but we're seeing clips again, which yeah. even just those like little morsels, that's been, it's done a lot. Like I, it was nice to see those. I don't like the music already, but what did you oh. think of the Elyona Kostanaya clip that we saw from Danny, right? Well, we've talked about choreographing for who's in front of you. It was, they don't okay, they don't we're gonna, they don't get hurt, but here's the thing. And even Tarasova, who is, is, you know, pushing for her federation and her skaters and career. She even acknowledged like Danny G has got to, to evolve a little bit. Mm -hmm. And seeing him do it with her was outrageously insightful for me. Beautifully, he does those moves 
better than the girls does because he's choreographing for himself. Now it makes sense. It's kind of like there's, there's an opera singer, or there's an opera composer who basically writes these operas where every single character is written for him because he test runs and sings it at the piano. And I was like, okay, but you've written now this whole piece that only you should be singing. And that's how I feel a little bit about Danny G. It's like everything, he's doing it better than Costa Naya because it fits him, it's natural to him. He should do that. And Costa Naya should do something else. It's more of the same. It was, it was filling out a bit of a bigger pattern than I'm used to seeing from some of their, their sequences in that way, but it's, it's again using the same vocabulary of movement and the same I, angsty thing. I thought that it fights what she does naturally. And it was interesting because last year's free program, it had beautiful moments and then it had that more modern angular type movement that's almost a Benoit ripoff that he is doing. And, and they chose to expand on that. And exactly. We like that program in spite of that section, not because yeah. of that section. And I find they're focusing on the wrong area. I just feel like she has such beautiful edges and glide and there are such choreographers, even within Russia, who could help her and do something yeah. really iconic and special. Give her something she deserves. But and, I, and I understand, I'm sh they'll all say she likes the music or she like. okay, good for her. But like, we have a beautiful lyric skater that again, there's a handful of those skaters that give us that amazing nostalgia to a time of big, open, beautiful skating. She's one of them. She, she strikes a nerve in a lot of fans for that reason. So why are you denying us like what she can do so well? Again, and in this flag, world- Trusev is not on your team anymore and this girl doesn't have all the quads, but she has all the components. Right. Maximize that, right. really use it. Really right. find something sophisticated and interesting and still current. Keep, keep that PCS bump she has, you know? Um, yeah, and again, in this world where everyone wants to skate to this emo ballad music, I, I would love to see her do something straight classical again. That's, she's the one. Yeah. So. She definitely has some feistiness to her, but yeah, it's, it's all. So does plenty of other music and movement. You know what I mean? You can channel that in many other ways besides this same old thing. Now, did you see that your girl, Maria Sotskova, officially retired. Let's see. <laughs> I thought we were gonna talk about Ting, because I do like Ting, but oh yes, Maria, yes. Well, I mean, again, one of those weird announcements, like when- but She had already retired, to be honest. She, they, I they did fade. too. People yeah. think, and we don't yeah. ever get official announcements, so. I thought it was pretty soon after the Olympics, almost, that she had announced, but. but isn't she in and school full time, right? It was I think and she she's always had a tough journey and she's actually spoken very well about it, I found. Um, it's interesting because, you know, as fans, we had that kind of mm, she's sort of sleepy vibe to her and this sort of thing. And then she spoke about it. She's like, Do you know what it's like when all the people in Russia that were supposed to be like rooting for her keep calling her boring and like all this sort of stuff? And I don't know, it was kind of she seemed to be in front of a lot of the issues skating can give people. And so I'm hopeful for whatever she does next. Whereas we know other people that leave the sport that kind of fade away like she did. There's a rough road ahead. When she was in school, I don't know what she was studying, but. Uh... Yeah. Now, Bettina Popova also has been writing a lot. This was an article. So there have been two. She's still, she said she wasn't going to talk anymore. And then yesterday she posted again on okay. Instagram. <laughs> So this article talked a lot about weight issues and skating. It talked a lot about kind of the harshness of training. But yesterday's actually even struck more of a nerve because- Well, she said she wasn't going to do any more interviews. interviews. She didn't say yeah. she wasn't going to do any more posts, yeah. yeah. But this was like a monologue. They let her write basically what she wanted to. And yesterday she was talking about how she was always told that her partner was more important than her and to be overly sexy when she was 14. And both things are basically into this bigger culture of pairs and ice dance that become- That common. transcend borders. Transcend borders, they trans transcend sports. I mean, yesterday, or within the last couple of days, Marilee Tracy's assistant, former assistant, Terry Gray, who has also worked at gyms after her, he was her assistant in 2000. He's the one hugging Alyssa Beckerman when she beats his name, the alternate. He was arrested in Vegas for lewd behavior with a minor. There's been 
stuff, I think smoke coming, he's had restrictions, you know, coming with safe sport, but this was an actual arrest. And then there was another ice dancer um, who represents Bulgaria. He was with Marina and then she distanced herself from him. Um, let me just get the name so I don't mess up the name um, in this situation. But this skater was also arrested. Uh, and for the, and his name is Dane Francis Ayers. Um, he's, there's a mugshot, he was arrested for the same, allegedly the same kind of thing. And he was immediately suspended by safe sport, which happens when you are arrested. Um, the same kind of thing that happened with Andrew Laverick, he was immediately uh, suspended. So it's, yeah, there's a lot of problematic behavior going on. He was actually in the midst of tryouts uh, when the arrest happened and then safe sport mm -hmm. took action. He's listed on the USFS website now. So just a lot of sad and things happening. But in the middle, Bettina Popova wrote that post and I thought, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and talks about, you know, an ice dance, it means the girl, the main thing is the girl has to be this weight. You know what I mean? That no one was talking to her about health. They were talking to her about weight. Yeah. Like they weren't talking about muscle or tone. They were talking only about a number. And this kind of toxic stuff and yet she was seen as frivolous yet to know behind the scenes she was like her perfectionism was practically she said driving her to want to jump off a building you know i mean it's immense yeah it's immense and again this isn't a russian phenomena or, we've heard about ice dancers in the u.s we've this is a skating a skating yeah. problem yeah. yeah so yeah it, it definitely um, also, uh, the Lithuanian ice dance team uh, with Allison Reed, they are moving now to Marie France. So that is another oh. country in the Gebois. Uh, <laughs> stable, yeah. Stable, I don't know, yeah. another flag. So just interesting there, but I don't know when people, if they are already moved or not. So lots of kinds of... Oh, what did you think of Ting? I think Ting's spin looks phenomenal. I, so she's someone that like, um, you know, when you like, you meet someone and you're not supposed to fall in love with them and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to catch feelings and you're so bad for me. That's how I view when I watch Ting because she's the kind of skater that I want to get like, you know, completely behind and support and root for and all these things. And I just fear there's like a future of heartache for me, but um, I just love her skating. And just see, yeah. He's notorious within skating circles, but... Um, but it's so, it's, it, there's something just unteachably beautiful yeah. inherently about her skating. And what she was really missing a little bit was getting, bending the knees and ankles into the ice a little bit when she was skating. And working with Natalia Linichuk, I would say is hopefully going to help that. Um, because there's been her some bouncing around. the real technician, but she obviously has a ton of knowledge and experience and uh, things to offer Ting. And she's also working with Emily Zhang a bit. If you, look, Natalia's been just posting a lot on okay. Instagram. So and she's- I should follow her. her. Yeah, and she's a fascinating woman. Uh, yeah. It would but, be nice to, to have Ting big. I've missed her in, in the US mix. So, and that's another great option because they need, enough strong skaters to really push one another to get to the next level. Right. You know, we've got Mariah, Brady. Do we know what those two can offer? Can they improve? I think we have Alyssa Liu, lots of upheaval going on there. Ting is another skater who's really important to really be yeah. in the mix there, who really has the ability. So I know people talk about Hannah Harrell. Um, I don't think the ability is the same as like Ting has. I don't think, yeah, I think Ting has that thing. Yeah. Ting that we know, yeah, Ting has a thing. And unfortunately we know that doesn't guarantee anything, you know, no. but I hope that it does. Yeah, what did you think of Mariah Bell? They posted her working with Adam Rapon on a new program. So Mariah it was tricky. Bell. Now in the clip I saw, I didn't hear any music. I don't know that I did either. That might have been strategic, yes. That, yeah. that might have been strategic. Maybe they're keeping it a secret. But so again, uh, my musician side is like, I don't know how to assess what I'm watching if I don't know what it's to. You know what I mean? If I'm not seeing it together. 
not to sound like Peggy Fleming, it looks like she ho is holding her movement so much longer than last year. But it does look like she's certainly developing a style and a brand on the ice, the way Ashley And that's does. something that Adam, I think, can teach because Adam has come into his own by owning, mm -hmm. just by owning space, owning a statement, you know, and so I think if it, is encouraging to Mariah on just to oversell and this kind of, I don't know, confident kind of thing. I, I think it could really help her be more presentational in a way. Now, I was unfamiliar with the the other girl in the film. In That's Holly Overstar, and she skated with Adam. She's of that generation. Okay, Minnesota. So okay, um, she was like she was a skater on the national level, um, definitely junior. Um, but I do think, um, I know that she's friends with Adam and Doug Rosano and I think Alex Johnson. Okay. That circle. Um, Adam does seem to be coaching Mariah a lot. I do believe he's really her main coach. So that's interesting as well that he is doing that. He's doing TV. Uh, we saw Tanif and Charlie and their agent, Lucy <laughs> Segusa, was tweeting that NBC should, you know, hire them to be the main they should. I, I, I mean, they, in a couple of the banter moments, she's, she's great. Mm -hmm. And he's very passionate. Like what I like about him, especially in his commentary, is that it, it, he's not afraid to say things of substance, but he's not saying it to be snarky. Yeah, he has opinions, for sure. He has a, he has a perspective and I like it. I, I, I enjoy hearing a perspective. And Tanith has just always done, especially in certain ice dance moves, when she decides to get technical, I always feel like I leave a little more informed, which I cannot say about other commentators. I would love to hear Tana, Charlie, and Scott Moyer just talk about ice dance. Could you imagine this conversation? <laughs> See where it goes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be just a tremendous conversation. Yes. Um, yeah, otherwise. It's... And they should invite Scott's girlfriend. It can be like a double date. Or she wife, might... whatever she is. What? I, no, I don't think he's married yet, right? Oh, They're fiance. engaged. Okay. Oh my goodness. Jonathan, you are just asking for it. This I know. Is, <laughs> you can invite Tessa Virtue. I'm sure she has opinions. And we could see who would be the better morning show host, Tanith or Tessa. I think they could both do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, but yeah. Tanith is very impressive. She's very impressive. And what if we say, if we saw her do something uh, like curling, Curling, like, she does beach volleyball. I loved that. I love I that. respect that Tana works hard at her craft. She runs and I bet she's gonna take the time to yeah. learn that sport, you know? Yeah. So unlike other commentators, she works hard at her that uh, yeah, that ISU equestrian idiot. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. But yeah, so um other things I wanted to hit on. The rest of the ISU wards I didn't think were that groundbreaking. Um, no, correct. <laughs> there is going to be a podcast about the Corollis. Um, oh. This week, it starts on Tuesday. So that will definitely be something I think everyone will probably want to watch and discuss. Uh, yeah. Certainly interesting. Tonight on See Alive, I'm interviewing uh, Kim Kelly, uh, who mm -hmm. was a gymnast who was voted off of the 1992 Olympic team because she didn't have the right look is the official reason by Bella Caroli. And they voted knew, off like the island, like they had a yes, little they, they did some shady finagling to have an extra Olympic trials after the already Olympic trials so that Bella could get a, one of his gymnasts and another gymnast he wanted on the team. And they- Was it the right move to, from a winning perspective? You no. Know, like, could he have justified it? it you can justify anything in a subjective sport, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, for, because people use, well, so-and-so's scores counted. Well, everyone counted a certain number of scores towards the team. It wasn't like there was like a huge weak link on the team. Okay. You never know, right? Like people wound up competing. Dominic Dawes was one of the people that was really assured she wasn't really gonna be kicked off the team. She didn't have the best Olympics in 92. I mean, you don't know, right? You never know what happens in hindsight. You can play those games forever. I think in their mind, it was the right decision in terms of to treat human beings, not the right move, right? So um, 
it's, it's a difficult one. I think it's going to be interesting chat. Um, but I'm excited to judge the 2018 free skate with you tomorrow because people have been very into that video about oh god arms and okay yes I mean I still have Evan Perelstein you know debating a plus three or a plus two for Ziggy to vote with me messaging incessantly um, but that's the thing we have to remember also those judges don't have that luxury to think about it like it's, Jonathan yeah you want I would clip any I will give Evan's the email addresses of any of those judges. Look, he can message them. Uh, <laughs> Sue, okay, he, he's in our comments and yes. Uh, I mean, he was trying to say that um, Zagita was chest forward with her arms. That's a difficult position on the landing. I'm like, that's an ugly position. That's an unesthetically, yeah, that's an aesthetically unpleasing look. In my so, like, yeah. I'm good with my plus two, we're done. Yeah, and scene. Our placements were interesting. Our placements okay. were interesting. Yeah. Our placements were actually pr very much in line. It was just the numbers next to them were wet. Yes. The numbers and the spacing and... Yeah. Because now I'm still in the 80s. So I'm still all about the damn ordinal, but I have to remember now we're going back to points. Someone was saying to me, someone has to explain. Their colleague did not explain, come through and explain how they used to do the points before they switched to ordinals in 1980 because someone was showing me the ordinals that Linda would have won in 1980 if they just went by the ordinals and not the points. Which is oh, cool. I didn't realize that because, you know, when we've gone back, we know how to do the factoring. Once you yeah. get rid of figures, the factoring was very easy to follow in the 6-0 system, but yeah. oh, how random. So someone needs to explain all of that to us. It's, yeah. Get Doug Haw on the line. <laughs> Doug Haw on the line, yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. He's probably sitting by the pool, having an Arnold Palmer. Amazing. <laughs> what does Doug Haw do? He lives in Florida, right? Are they... Yeah, it's true. I mean, yeah. Um, not, all, not too much else is going on in skating. I mean, I, oh, Alexa and Brandon. We did see a side-by-side. -side. Oh, triple sow. Yeah. So it looked good. It's a new entrance for both of them. Uh, mm -hmm. She was a little bit over her left side. It's that like Raphael circle that you either love or you don't. But she doesn't look a thousand. They look good. They look good. It, they're early yeah. on and they look good together, I think. Um, right on the eyes, they're together. Because we had already seen the side-by-side -side toes from before. Yeah. I think um, they're going to be a, a solid pair. I think so too. Time, they have some time to you keep I'm working. very hopeful for them. Yeah. And... Yeah. Aliona Sevchenko did such a pose. Um, oh my gosh, did you see that? I didn't know who that man was, but- um, It's Jody. Jody dated Johnny Weir's ex-husband after- Victor. Yes, Victor Verona. Yes. It's a small world in the skating. Yeah, remember that article? What was it? What, didn't they throw Fabergé eggs at one another or something? At yes, one point? they were throwing <laughs> Fabergé eggs and is it like CDs? Oh, I forget. I, I had another friend that had a, a breakup that made the news or knew someone that had a breakup that made the news and lots of fun shenanigans. About okay. It. <laughs> it's always something. It was great. It was, yeah, I think Fabergé eggs would be, and Birkin okay. bag and things like that. It was. As awesome. one would expect. Yeah. One would expect. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you should come to our class on for <laughs> Learn to Skate, Jonathan. Y'all trying to get me to get just, back in shape. <laughs> no. It's, so we have Igor. And Mark Henretti is going to be co, co teaching. A oh, how nice! With him. So, I am all of that ice dancer fabulousness off the ice. I think in they one do screen, yeah. Different edge turns, you know, on the screen. Yesterday, I was so tired. I've been exhausted, so I've been back on the ice. And I, this week, it's just like I was crashing, taking a nap, like almost every single day. And yesterday, I was so tired, and Igor was like having us do back counters and I was like I am never doing this on the ice in anytime soon like what <laughs> in God's name are you trying to have us do like what are we yeah doing? yeah I mean, but well so here's here's something that I I wish that USFS or um the ISU would be doing is for a while uh, someone very nice gave me passwords to like um some of the PSA judging and coaching like lectures and conferences and things like that. And listening to those sorts of lectures and symposiums and stuff was outrageously interesting to me 
And I wish that there was some stuff like that that we could be subscribing to and listening to that was put out by, because the, they have all those judges seminars. They have all of those PCS sort of lectures available. But they what? They want you to pay for it. Okay, go on. I would, I would. I mean, I can't imagine they're gonna charge an arm and a leg, you know? That's why you need to watch the Cicely Morrow videos. And we're gonna interview her yeah. about Gus Lucy technique and Natalia Dumas. A hundred percent. I want to be watching all that. Yes. I okay. want to be able, I want to watch videos that help me understand how to look more critically at a short dance or a rhythm dance. You need to watch the Gus Lucy video so that you could see uh, Ronnie Robertson do that sit spin. Uh, yeah. Just go back and watch the 1956 worlds and be like, yes, he was right. We love Ronnie Robertson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you need to be asking Doug Hall, Doug Hall, did Hayes Jenkins deserve to win? Was Ronnie Robertson? Let me tell Ronnie you. Ronnie Robertson was robbed. <laughs> okay. We want to talk about old queens with Frank Carroll, okay? It's true. It's true. How's Frank doing? What's he doing in quarantine? I know. Just sitting by the pool, I hope. Also oh, with Flash the Hamilton. Hamilton. Oh, yes. And? Okay. I've listened to I did not, by the way. I did not. A number of times. It's growing on me. Okay. I don't allow myself to sing it. There's an element of it that does found, sound like Schoolhouse Rock. That's That was my concern because yeah. it's like rapping about history. I, so inherently I thought that but was- But it is fun and cool. Okay. I'm in the middle. I enjoyed it. That's right. And I think, Dave, I would also enjoy it. The problem is when something is so forced at you yeah. and so overhyped, it becomes difficult because I have to separate it now because now I'm expecting the best thing I've ever seen instead of just experiencing something. What I will say in musical theater is I cannot stand like a jukebox musical where it's like, let's just take a famous artist, put their album on stage and hope the fans attend. You know, the Abba this, Gloria Estefan that, the, you know, Billy Joel this, you know, all of this sort of stuff. So the fact that it was something new and creative and original, I love that it was receiving attention and it was at least that. Does that make sense? I think Meryl yeah. Streep always trying to sing in movies. I mean, she's got to find- She always voice. wanted to be an opera singer. She talked about it. And she used to take lessons right after Beverly Sills. And she would hear Beverly Sills sing and be like, I really probably shouldn't pursue this. She was right. Remember, she was she a very was right. salty that she wasn't chosen to be Evita. And Meryl, the one role you didn't get in your life, get over it. And you know what? She's above it. I think she's above an Andrew Lloyd Webber portrayal. How dare you? Patti Lapone is fabulous. <laughs> But Patti LuPone has that kind of thing. Meryl doesn't have that kind of thing. You beast. Okay. But neither does Madonna. <laughs> Patti is incredible. Yeah. A treasure, if you will. An icon. An icon. A one of a kind. Okay. We have yet to see a great Evita on the ice because no one can get the music cuts right. Nicole Bolt yeah, might close, but she and Kelly With those press-on nails, that's all I remember about her Evita. Courtney Hicks even had an Evita, remember that? She did, she did have an Evita, Jonathan. And did Rika Hongo maybe have one? There was some unexpected Japanese program, I thought, too. I mean, Rika, she was the one that did um, Riverdance. How could you forget? Riverdance, have... thinking she was she... Elkin. Did she do the Seven. Carmen that you really enjoyed as well? Was she one of the Carmen? No, there was a Japanese uh, female skater who did the, um, a Barbara Seville version that's like that Carmen that Gabby Daleman did at the Olympics, so. Oh my God, Gabby Daleman, we have yet to judge her free. We have so much fun in store for us tomorrow night, Jonathan. I know, I, it's true. It's so true. excited to judge this free event. <laughs> it's gonna be epic. We really need to pay attention to the kissing cries tomorrow. I mean that, remember the Gabby Daleman kiss and cry with Tracy? Was, is this the event where Gabby was really talking through it, or was it Worlds when she was really talking to the coach and trying to direct the narrative? That's right. Well, uh, several times. That was also several times in this fall. This fall, she was doing that excessively yeah. with Lee, and it was just so chilling. Oh, I can't wait. This, yeah. this free program, it's gonna be. It's really gonna deliver. <laughs> I know, and we have others coming up in, in the mix. We have. I'm going to finish the Woods, you know, Rob series. That I'm going oh, great. To yes, that is on the to-do list. We have the 2000 Worlds to judge. And then we're going to start some of those Hanyu. And let's just, 
Because we've recapped these events, but now, uh, so this is making it easier, the skating scores thing, because you can just insert GOE. And who is and... He? We don't know his, ide his identity is anonymous. It's like a- like Oh, a... is it? Yes. Do you know who it is? Perhaps. How? <laughs> because early on, I felt like I was obsessed with his site, like at the ground level, and I did my stalking, and I found him early on. Really? Because I get asked who this person is often. But I think he likes this anime. So. All right. I'll always remember Christos, Christopher Scott figured out that I was Aunt Joyce and put it on FSU and it was. It was and it was over. <laughs> it was just very him. Anyway. Your ice cream had melted at the ice cream yeah. stand. Yeah. It was like, come yeah. on. <laughs> I didn't do anything to you. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done it plenty of things to other people, but not you. <laughs> no, he's fine. Uh, anyway, he didn't judge my gymnast. He's a tough judge okay. right here. So. Okay, okay. My, my one friend is always salty about it. He's always okay. <laughs> it would be like if I were judging. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I know, Dave, like, you have no idea when I shut the computer after our 2018 short, I was like in a daze. Because I was like, what did I do? Again, I totally stand by the placements, mm -hmm. but I was like, what were you doing on some of those PCS? And I was like, well, I'll try to make amends in some ways. On it explains much about the pageant world. I, I don't know who is. I think, it, but you know what? I think I'm not the first person who's judged an Olympic event that feels that way after a short. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I've never been asked to judge a pageant, Jonathan. I've only judged an Olympic short program. It's because they're not pageants anymore. They are scholarship competitions. And you know, they, they postponed the whole shebang, I obviously. Yeah. Miss New York. She's been Miss New York forever now. And she keeps and going, she keeps Interestingly going. enough, that's what happened last year too. Because when Miss America 2.0 announced this thing and they had all these problems. So that was already a too long of a year because they couldn't find a venue for the competition and they couldn't find a... Um, a network to broadcast it, like it was a whole. You know, I don't know that interesting is the word that I would use to transition there, but it's. Uh... <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But each time, like I see now all these Gretchen Carlson sort of documentaries, I'm like, oh, the Miss America woman. And they're like, ah, I feel like she contributed a lot more than just her <laughs> Miss America contributions. And I was like, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Well, everyone, have a great week. Hold it at your look sexy. Bye now. Bye, guys.